I'm Matt Wilson, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm a sculpture artist. I was always creative, um, and I think my parents still to this day, like Legos and Lincoln Logs, that was like the foundation for what I do now. I remember in first grade there was a contest throughout the school and I drew a picture of a horse and an apple tree. And it got like third place in the whole school. And I realized then, I guess people knew before that, but that was like the thing that clicked in my head is like, I can be good at this if I want to be. I ended up doing a lot of drawing and painting throughout the way, but about eight years ago, I transitioned into doing found object metal sculpture. So at some point, it's like I see an object somewhere, Goodwill, Scrapyard, and I, I take it because it's cool or it's a piece that I was looking for. So. Uh, a lot of it too is putting it in the shop, remembering where it goes and where that piece is so I can use it later on. My creative process from beginning, I, I know what I want to do. It's about getting the things that I want to use to build this sculpture onto the table, a big table in my shop and then everything's there and then it's just, I just go after it. I never know if I'm going to start with the head of a figure or the legs, but that all, I just kind of go into the zone when I'm doing that, and that's a personal thing. The very first bird that I made, I was actually making a gas tank for a motorcycle, but it also looked like a bird head. So then I decided to just see if I could do a bird. I made a couple birds, and then over time it was like, I was more aware of watching birds. So then it became like trying to emulate the way they stand or the way they like perch. I didn't necessarily become a bird watcher, like I wasn't sitting in the woods, you know, with a booklet and some binoculars, but I definitely paid more attention driving down the road with my son and my wife. I'm like, did you see that red tail hawk? Or did you not see that cardinal on the street sign? I think what got me started with them for sure was, it was the material. It wasn't like a desire to, to do birds. It was definitely something that happened with that spoon that looked a certain way that started the process. And now it's evolved to, I think at one point I decided, all right, I can make birds. They do well, let's see what else I can make. And then from there, I decided I wanted to try to make other animals. I pay so much attention to, to flatware in restaurants now. It's, it's almost a disease. Like I judge everybody by it. Well, but what kind of flatware they have. The stuff from Korea and Japan is the best. The sturdier, the better. I like unique stuff that you don't see everywhere. But then again, I've never used anything that was new. The material has always been a part of why I make what I make. Again, I was looking around my shop and there was some deer antlers upside down on the wall. And then being upside down, all of a sudden they were Elephant tusk it was a perfect, perfect elephant after that. My favorite thing that I've done lately is when I've incorporated bone into my sculptures. And it's all found skulls and turtle shells and stuff. Um, I'm not an avid hunter, so I'm not out killing these animals for their skulls. I like working with found objects, and if I'm able to take something that's dead and rotting and dying and give it new life, almost a rebirth for it. That, that's something when I'm done with that, I'm proud of because it's taken something that's gonna be dirt soon and making it something that's sitting on somebody's shelf. I think a lot of what I do and a lot of what I like about what I do is the engineering process of putting these things together. I really like for things to be put together in a sense where there's not a distracting weld or, or even a way to tell exactly how it was done. It's really a dream chat. I teach myself something new every day and that's the only way that I do that is by making mistakes and that's how I learn. The most difficult thing about being an artist for me is not having an off switch. I'm an artist all the time. Even when I dream, the last one was an octopus that I made. And I woke up and I knew exactly how I wanted to put it together and exactly what I wanted to use. I, I just don't have an off switch, so I'm an artist my entire life. But yeah, the, the anxiety of that, it's, it's overwhelming. I would much rather give sculptures away than selling them. 
That's one of the most awkward parts too about being an artist is asking for the money or asking for the check or, or like how do you even do that? Like I would much rather be able to just give everything away. Talking to people's tough, wine helps. <laughs> The best thing about being an artist is the satisfaction I get when I complete a sculpture. But there's some things when I finish it, I like almost ride this high for a day or two that it's just, I feel really accomplished when I get that thing done. There's so much satisfaction in that. It's like, this did not exist on planet Earth until I just put this together. Being an artist, you have to sell yourself just as much as the piece sells itself. Yeah, when people are at a gallery and people are buying stuff and things are flying off the wall or shelf, or um, there's a good feeling, uh, definitely a sense of accomplishment. Art is what I'm good at. I was fortunate enough to find that this is something that I'm good at. This is something that I can provide for my family doing. And a lot of people I think go through their life and they don't find what they were supposed to do. And I'm very fortunate that I was able to find this as quick as I did and turn it into something. But if I didn't have art in my life, I think I would just be lost. Come inside. I'll be waiting. You and I. And this end describes.